We've seen that the body is a mosaic of vulner vulnerable tissues and organs and organs that are more resistant to damage. That is, in fact, associated with the degree to which reactions are fixed or adjustable. Some developmental and physiological processes are very sensitive. For example, glucose metabolism and blood pressure. Others are insensitive, DNA replication, purine metabolism. The sensitive reactions usually evolve to be adjustable to changes in the environment, and the insensitive reactions evolve to be fixed, or both things went along together. It's really sort of a chicken and the egg problem. The adjustable reactions are buying flexibility at the cost of vulnerability, so insulin resistance is, and type 2 diabetes are pathologies that result in an adjustable reaction. The insensitive reactions are robust to being dysregulated, but they remain vulnerable to genetic defect. When something goes wrong with an insensitive reaction, a fixed situation, it is normally a catastrophe. So let's unpack those a bit. The characteristics of this contrast are that the fixed reactions, of course, are invariant. The adjustable are re regulated by environment. Fixed reactions are insensitive to environment, and they operate the same way in any natural environment, whereas the adjustable reactions are sensitive, and their function depends on the particular environmental state. Interestingly, the fixed reactions are often highly conserved right across the tree of life. Intermediate metabolism in bacteria and humans is actually fairly similar. Adjustable reactions vary within and between species. They are constantly being shaped by natural selection, and they are responsible for adaptation to different environments. The fixed reactions are controlling core biological processes, and the adjustable reactions are controlling physiological adaptation. They're responsible for phenotypic variation, and for reaction norms. The fixed reactions can be, can be disrupted in a catastrophic way by a single gene mutation. They are responsible for things like cystic fibrosis, progeria, that is unnaturally rapid aging, for SCID, which is severe combined immune deficiency, and for many other innate diseases. Adjustable reactions are often, on, in contrast, regulated not by one, but by many genes. Those genes are often polymorphic, and the alleles for those genes are often changing in frequency under selection. They cause predispositions to diseases that are caused by environmental factors, and those predispositions are then elicited when there is an environmental mismatch. Then we get obesity, type 2 diabetes, asthma, hypertension, atherosclerosis, things like that. So some comments on fixed processes. Some of the core processes that are fixed are DNA replication or some, something like transcription of actin to make cytoskeleton. At the larger level, the level of big modules in the body, major features in the body plan are fixed. Number of heads, usually one. Legs, usually two. Two arms, five digits, and two eyes. Those features are normally fixed. If there's a mutation that disrupts such a trait, there can be a really catastrophic effect. Now, normally the quality control mechanisms in the mammalian reproductive tract are going to catch mutations of large effect like that. They'll be caught either in the gametic zygotic or the stage of the conceptus. So there might be an early spontaneous abortion that just takes that out in the first menses and actually the woman never notices that that happened. But when they're not caught, there can be major birth defects. So brace yourself, these pictures are not pretty. Here are some major birth defects. Here is a baby that was born without a brain. That's called anencephaly. Here is a child that survived with ectrodactyly. It is missing a few fingers. Now, that is a condition that can actually make it through life, but it is a major problem. Here is a child that uh, was dead at birth. It has what's called patau face. It is missing both eyes. It looks like it has kind of a proto-eye like a cyclops in the middle of its forehead. That is what happens when a mutation occurs in a developmental control gene. In these cases, it's probably somewhere in about the oh, first month 
first two months of pregnancy uh, with ectrodactyly, perhaps a little bit later, and they, they are major birth defects. Adjustable features are quite different. They vary on different time scales. So physiological adaptation is something that goes on on a scale of seconds to days, and it is controlled by homeostatic feedback loops. Physiological acclimation involves the process of rheostasis. That means changing the set points on the feedback loops. So for example, an organism that in the summer has its heat thermostat set at a certain level can reset it in the winter so that it's homeostatic in the winter but at a different level. That is certainly going on in hibernation. Then there's developmental plasticity and that is often something which happens once in the lifespan and then is irreversible. So for example, the plasticity of age and size at maturity, that's an event that happens once and it actually has a big effect on body size, which lasts for the whole life of the organism. So here is an adjustable process, glucose distribution in the body. It's controlled by insulin. The set points for insulin level and insulin sensitivity change during pregnancy to give privilege to the fetus and during infection to give privilege to the immune system. So the fetus in the one case and the immune system in the other can get more glucose because they need more energy. That has a price. And the diseases of homeostasis include insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. The symptoms of type 2 diabetes are excess thirst, frequent urination, and constant hunger. This kind of diabetes is caused not by the fact that there is too little insulin in the blood, it's caused by the fact that the cells are resistant to the amount of insulin that is there. That's different from type 1 diabetes. The long-term complications of type 2 diabetes are, can be quite serious. Heart disease, strokes, kidney failure, and amputations can result. To summarize, fixed traits are insensitive to the environment, they're deeply conserved, and they are often developmentally canalized. Mutations that disrupt traits like that often act early in development, and as you've seen from the birth defects, they can have really catastrophic consequences. Adjustable traits react sensitively to changes in the environment, are often controlled by many genes that have allelic variation. And when adjustable traits are disrupted, whether that's done either by mutation or by environmental insult, that produces a disease of homeostasis like diabetes.